All right, let's do more examples of finding a parametric representation of the solution set in several different linear equations. And remember, the parametric representation of a solution set is just a way to describe all of the solution set of a linear equation, right? So in this first example, equation one, we have negative two x plus y minus three z is equal to one. So this is a linear equation and it has three different variables. So when we come across something like this, we usually try to solve for one variable in terms of the other variable or variables. So in this equation, we could choose any of the three variables and solve for that variable in terms of the other two. Since x is first, I'll just solve for x. So let's solve for x, right? So the first thing I could do is actually take the 2x term, the negative 2x term, and bring it over to the other side by adding 2x to both sides. And we'll get the equation y minus 3z is equal to 1 plus 2x, right? And then I can take this 1 and subtract it from both sides to bring it to the left-hand side. So then I would get negative 1 plus y minus 3z is equal to 2x, right? And then finally, I can divide by two on both sides, right? Divide by two on both sides, and I'll get negative one half plus y over two minus three over two z is equal to x. So in this equation, we have x in terms of y and z. Now notice something interesting. y and z can take on any value. So if y for an example, if y and z were both zero, then x would be negative one half, right? Or if y and z were some other number, we would get some other value for x. So really, since y and z can be anything, we can choose parameters to represent y and z. So if I said let y equal t and z equal s, and both t and s are just arbitrary characters that I'm choosing to represent any real number. So if I plugged in y equals t and z equals s into this equation, I would get x is equal to negative one half plus y, which is t over two minus three halves z, which is s. So this right here is the parametric representation of the solution set. So these are the values that y and z can take on as well as x to represent the many different solutions. So let's do a second example and I'll scroll down to give us some room. Let's do this in blue. So equation two, this linear equation is gonna be, oops, equation two is going to be three times x one, plus two times x two plus x three is equal to zero. So remember we have one equation here, but we have three different variables, x one, x two, and x three, right? x one, x two, x three. So remember we can solve for one variable in terms of the other variables. Well, let's just choose a variable. Let's choose x two, right? Why not? So the first thing I could do is subtract two x two from both sides and I would get three x one, plus x3 is equal to negative 2x2, right? And then if I divided by negative two on both sides, I would get negative three over two times x1 minus one over two times x3, and that's equal to x2. So now you can see here that if I plug in any value for x1 and any value for x3, I'll get some value for x2. Remember, these are any real numbers, right? Any real number. So I can choose parameters to represent any real number for x1 and x3. I'm just gonna choose x1 equal to p. p is just gonna be some arbitrary character that I choose to represent any real number. And for x3, I'll choose q. So if I plugged in these values into this equation, I'll get x2 is equal to negative three halves p minus one half q. And there you go, the parametric representation of the solution set. So now let's do two more examples. We'll do equation number three here in green, equation three. 
we have 11x1 plus 22x2 plus 33x3 is equal to 11. So here we can choose, again, any variable that we want, x1, x2, or x3. I'll go ahead and choose x1. So the very first thing I can do is noticing that 11 is a common factor in all of these terms, I can divide by 11 on both sides. So 11 divided by 11 on the right-hand side is just 1. And on the left-hand side, 11x1 divided by 11, well, that's just 1x1, right? Plus 22 divided by 11 is 2x2. Plus 33 divided by 11 is 3x3. And that's equal to 1. So if I do some fancy math and I subtract 2x2 and 3x3 from both sides, I'll get x1 is equal to 1 minus 2x2 minus 3x3, right? And here I can let x2 and x3 equal some parameter variable. For x2, I'll choose t. And for x3, I'll choose s. So x1 would be 1 minus 2t minus 3s x2 would be equal to t, and finally x3 would be equal to s. This right here is the parametric representation of that solution set. So finally, our last one, since it's our last one, we'll do a fun color, let's say a rainbow. Exciting, right? So equation, oh, check that out. Is that gonna be too distracting? Oh well. Equation four, we have three x minus one half y is equal to nine. <laughs> this looks like Fruit Loops, doesn't it? So remember, you can find any parametric representation of a solution set by solving for any variable in terms of the other. So here we have x and y. So let's just solve for one of them. Let's solve for y. Well, if we subtract three x from both sides, we'll get negative one half times y is equal to nine minus three x, and these colors are really distracting. And then if we multiply by negative one on both sides, we get positive one half times y is equal to three x minus nine, right? I just switched the terms because they switched signs. And then if I multiply by two on both sides, I'll get y is equal to two times three is six, minus nine times two is 18. And here I can let x be any number, right? If x was any real number, I would always get a corresponding value for y. And remember, we call x our free variable because it can be any real number. So this is our free variable. So I'm going to let x equal some character, some arbitrary character t that represents any real number. So if x is equal to t, then y would be equal to 6 times t minus 18. And this right here is a parametric representation of the solution set.